My lips singing. Yeah. Yeah. Owie. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And in the lead up to Super Bowl 52 this weekend, I'm joined by Von Miller. He's a six time Pro Bowl linebacker for the Denver Broncos, a Super Bowl champion, and a big game MVP. But how will he fare in the hot sauce Terradome? We'll find out today. Von, welcome to the show. Yes, sir. Happy to be here. How are you with hot food? I like hot food. I'm from, I'm from Texas, Dallas, Texas, so, you know, pretty familiar. You ready to get it going? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, so this first one should be a free throw for you. Easy. So it's not every day that we have a real, actual chicken farmer on Hot One, mm -hmm. so I want to start by taking it back to DeSoto, Texas, where you keep your 60-plus chickens. Was poultry sciences always your calling or just a way to pass while you racked up wins for the Aggies? Yeah, it started with taking an easy class, you know, in college, and that's time build up. I was like, man, I like this. I, I, this is a billion dollar industry. I, you know, I like raising chickens, you know. I guess it was destined for me. Do you ever have any problems with like predators or anything like that? Yeah, we had a big owl problem. Owl got us for like, I don't know, 10 birds. And um, we had, we got like a net over the top, just coming straight through the net, boom, straight through the net every time. We go out one morning, it'd be a hole. We have fixed that hole. Two days later, it'd be another hole. Three days after that, it's five or six holes up top. So he just, the owl would just like, forget it. <laughs> I just got ruined in your life. Yeah, you just ruined it. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been good uh, besides that, though. Do you still dream of having a chicken TV show where you have celebrities do voices for the chickens? And if yeah. so, who are the actors at the top of your list? Yeah. How you know about the chicken uh, cartoon? <laughs> yeah. Remember how Babe the pig was? Oh, yeah, yeah. How you had, like, you know, the pig is talking and you got the ducks and stuff. I would like to have that same concept just uh, around a, a rooster. And it'd be double. And this is Louisiana? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Classic. Mm -hmm. So with Super Bowl 52 on NBC just around the corner, I think it's a good time to take it back to that fateful day two years ago where you racked up your own Super Bowl win and then an MVP to boot. Who's the first person that you called after the win? I didn't call anybody. My phone went crazy. I still have messages on my phone that I haven't read from Super Bowl two years ago. My mom, she was already there. My dad was there. My, my brother was there. I really didn't talk to anybody for like for like two days. What, if anything, do you remember about celebrating with Lil Wayne? Um, that night, yeah, I really, I really did your information, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I really did your, your homework. Um, Lil Wayne was hosting a party. We won, so we just like catch him at the club. It, it was fun, though. It was dope. Do you think that you killed the dab? You know, a couple of guys bring it back, but you know, it was just big at that moment. And you know, when you see guys like dabbing and doing all this stuff, you, it's just natural. You're like, man, you know. I don't want to see that no more. Especially with Cam, he dives after every you know single play, and he had been killing everybody all season. So I guess it was a little motivation for us to, you know, stop that that uh, that game. Man, I'm good. I'm good. I know that you've described yourself as the ultimate geek, and you spend a lot of time going down internet rabbit holes and watching science documentaries. Do you think that time travel is possible? I think it is. If you can speed up time. Why can't you slow it down? You travel at the speed of light for almost a year. Outer space, when you come back, the Earth would have aged, you know, 10 years while you just aged one year. I mean, I mean these questions are way bigger, and way over my head, but I'm, I'm sure it's possible if you can speed it up, um, why can't you reverse it or slow it down? Do you think that in our lifetime, we'll see a human colony on Mars? Elon Musk said by 2020, right? <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I believe him. If you could take one extinct animal Bring them back and make them an NFL mascot. Which one would you choose and why? The Hass Eagle, H-A-S-S. -S. It was one of the biggest uh, birds to ever roam the earth. Legend that I used to snatch humans in New Zealand. You know, the Eagles going to the Super Bowl, so why not have the Hass Eagle? That's, that's 30 times bigger than them. And then, is there any part of you that fears that advancements in artificial intelligence may lead to some sort of post-apocalyptic world where the human race is just... <laughs> <laughs> Where the human race is just ruled yeah. by cyborgs and robots. Oh, so like the Matrix. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it could, I mean, it's possible. I mean, Sophia. I mean, that's crazy. Some of the stuff that they're doing and some of the jobs that they have automated and stuff. Every single year, it seems to be, you know, new advancements when it comes to AI. I, I think it's 
it, I mean, it's scary to think about, but it's, I mean, it's definitely possible. Yeah, these some big wings too. Mm -hmm. Turkey leg, turkey wing. <laughs> oh, for real. At First Beat Feast, we care way too much about what our guests eat. And I know lots changed for you since you're reading Chick-fil-A daily. Mm -hmm. Why do you tell young players that a personal chef is a better investment than jewelry and nice cars? Um, I just try to give information. I just try to suggest things that I wish I would have done when I was a rookie. I wish I would have had a chef that cooked for me breakfast, lunch, and dinner during the season and the off season because that's how you get ahead. That's how you play 15, 16 years, staying healthy and, and eating right. I, we got to find out what Tom Brady's eating, and I need, <laughs> I need to get some of that stuff. And then, too, because, you know, the personal chef or the celebrity chef wave, it's really built over the mm -hmm. last couple of years. And some of these guys even have their own certain notoriety. If you think about Rick Ross's chef or Floyd Mayweather's chef, mm -hmm. have you ever had somebody's personal chef make you a dish that made you just want to poach their chef? I'm just a loyal guy, man. I, if I go over to somebody's house and they have a great chef, man, the food was great. And I go back to my chef and tell them what they had and how they did it. So I'm just, I'm just a loyal guy, man. The guys that I got, I'm, I'm a ride with them. Ghost pepper? Mm-hmm. <laughs> was that five? That's five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good, though. All right, Vaughn, so we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram. We do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, pull interesting pictures that mm -hmm. need more context. I'll just show you the picture, and then you tell me the bigger story. Does that sound good? Okay. All right, laptop, please. Was that uh, Sony FS7 right there? Two? Three. Flow. <laughs> You're into the equipment here. Yeah. When it comes to like Instagram, you know, you can use that platform. You can use that platform in all type of ways. And I like to use mine and create like little commercials and stuff. It's, it's free and I can always, you know, support myself on Instagram. Yeah. Look at this. All right, first things first. Yeah, Saturday Night Live, a week after we had won the Super Bowl. If you, you heard about uh, Kanye West, uh, Saturday Night Live. Uh, Oh, right, there was yeah, like a yeah. whole thing about... Yeah, that was that. That was that day. Did you catch any of that no, shrapnel? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't catch none of it, but the backstage assistant, she caught a lot of it. When I first went there, about, about uh, three hours before the show started, um, her hair was like nice and makeup was nice. She was you know, bringing stuff in, all cheerful. And she was uh, doing stuff for all the guys backstage. Um, by the end of the night, her hair was like, you know, messed up. You know, she had been sweating. I'm like, what's going on? She's like, you don't even want to know. It's crazy back here. <laughs> and then, uh, didn't you uh, get your 750 signed by Kanye that night? Or how yeah. did, and that's like a weird story too, yeah, right? That's, that's, a, that's a weird story too. I got Kanye. I really don't even ask for autographs or take pictures or anything like that. But you know, Kanye at Saturday Night Live, and I had an extra pair of Yeezys too. I had to. I had the shoe in my hand, but I'm I'm rushing. I I really didn't even think about getting a Sharpie. You know, and I hate when people bring me stuff to sign and they're not ready. Right, you know, I, right. hate, I hate when people ask for pictures. And then they're like yeah, messing around. Uh, with I, phone, I hate when yeah. they ask a picture and they're like, okay, yeah, let me get my picture. And they get it and they're like, hold, hold on, one, hold on one second. Hold on. <laughs> then they like take it and you can see them like, you know, shaking or whatever. Yeah. You can see them shaking. They take the picture. Oh, that was blurry. Hold on. <laughs> And that's the same, that's the exact same thing that I did, you know, that Kanye, I found him. And he didn't really want to do it. He's like, hey, can you sign my Yeezy? And he put his hand up, like, yeah, I signed it. And I gave him the shoe, and I was like, do you have a Sharpie? <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at me like, man, then, you know, Kim was right here. I looked at Kim, was like, do you have a Sharpie? <laughs> and she got a, she got a lab or so, but I was like, man, I am tripping right now. So I had to, like, <laughs> run and get a Sharpie, and I hit up and ran back, and he, like, signed it for me. It was cool. Oh, I wish I would've hit that. Denver Nuggets, I'm always there. Rocky, that's my guy. Well, he kind of caught me off guard on this right here. I was sitting, you know, on the bench regular, you know, day at the Pepsi Center. First of all, mascots aren't even supposed to talk. And he came to me on the sideline. He's like, hey, come shoot the shot. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, what's going on? I didn't know I was going to shoot a shot today. And he's like, come shoot the shot half court. I got ready to shoot the shot half court. He's like, no, no, turn around, throw it over. I'm like, what? He's a showman, Rocky. Yeah, I, I didn't hit it though, but it, I got close. I got close. This is that famous strip sack. Yeah, the strip sack. Do you have a favorite, the first one or the second one? Uh, my favorite play actually is when on the sideline, Cam he had tried to he was he had tried to run me over like the last minute, and we kind of like stalled out. I think it was that was probably like uh, in the second quarter as well. So it was it was right at the beginning of the game. Whenever you're going against elite quarterbacks, it's gonna come a time where they're gonna try somebody on the defense. Cause I've seen Cam run over truck 50 million guys and um. I was down for the coverage and I had turned around and I, and I saw him last minute. He had like a, a 10 yard running start. 
So to, to get that stall out was uh, was big for me. That was the biggest play of the game, in my opinion. I just got a dog with shades and a backpack. A little hot. Mm-hmm. So I've heard you talk in the past about how you had a hard time fitting into the Broncos locker room when you first got there. It's obviously changed a lot since. What's your best piece of advice to rookies on how to win over veterans? Oh, rookies pay attention. Every guy that makes it to the National Football League has been the man at some point. To win over vets, you just gotta play good. You could be the weirdest rookie ever. You ball out, you make plays right away, and everything else will fall in line. What's the most clever rookie prank that you've ever seen? In Minnesota, actually, um, they had bought boxes of fruit snacks, and they filled up one of the rookies' Range Rover with fruit snacks. Yeah, I thought that I thought that was clever. But me, I really don't like playing pranks on the rookies, you know, because um, I'm trying to earn over your trust, and then I, and then I prank you. You know, it's, it's just not, you know, it's not the easiest way to make friends in the locker room. You can smell that one. So I know that you have the Super Bowl 50 logo tattooed on you. I know that you have Chip tattooed on your shoulder. Do you know how many tattoos you have? Have you lost count at this point? My hands are my neck and my face. That's, my mom said that's, that was the places that you can't get tattooed, but everything else, pretty much. What's the last one you got? I, I really bounce around a lot. Tattoos hurt, tattoos hurt. So I started tattoo and I finished it like a couple of months later. What's the story behind the rooster tattoo? You have a rooster tattoo, right? Yeah, it's a it's a cock below my knee. I win a couple of, win a lot of bets with that tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and then you once tweeted about a tattoo. It's a watermelon slice, a chicken leg, a dollar sign, and a hater. Yeah. What does that mean? What was that tattoo? Oh, about? man, that was just a long night at the tattoo shop. You know, <laughs> you know 4 o'clock in the morning, come around. The tattoo shop's still open. You just start getting stuff. But, you know, it was just like, it's really like the Pac-Man theme. It's got like a, a piece of watermelon, um, chicken, and like the ghost is like a hater. So it was just something that I just... Yeah. So you're eating. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, see, like the Pac Man, right there, mm -hmm. just come across. Yeah, they got the little, right there. Yeah, you know, late night tattoo shop. Mm -hmm. You know, some guys got meanings and they could, you know, name tattoo. No, it's just a lifestyle for me. Yeah, you can, smell, you can smell this one for sure. I hope you don't have no cuts in your mouth or nothing. It's right. gonna hurt. <laughs> Gotta make sure you wash your hands after this stuff too, because if you touch your eyes after this, it's over. A lot of things you gotta watch out about touching <laughs> after this game. I've been there. <sighs> yeah. So during the 2017 offseason, you took a trip to Europe, whereas I understand it, you had a couple dozen stops on Drake's Boy Meets World Tour. What Drake song rings off hardest live to you? Yeah, I'm still trying to get my tongue back. <laughs> yeah, but uh, nine off of views, nine, um, turn the ups, turn the six upside down, it's a nine now. When you hear it, when you hear it like live, and, you know, the blue lights, and, all type of stuff is crazy. And then I understand that you're joined on the Euro trip with Odell Beckham Jr. What's his best quality as a travel partner and what's his most annoying habit? A lot of pranks, a lot of jokes. I guess you get, you know, you get tired of that after a while. <sighs> um, he genuinely has a unique outlook on life. <laughs> Same night, I get an invite to Drake's Grotto or Vaughn's Club 58. Where do I go and why? Man, you go to Drake Grotto. <laughs> <laughs> What? It's in it's in Calabasas, it's in LA. The, the basement is in Denver. You know, it's in Denver. I mean, the hours is open 24 hours, but I mean, yeah, if you get the invitation to Drake Gatto, I yeah, you should do that. <sighs> My lips singing. Dowie. <laughs> yep. This sauce will blow you away. With a bullet on it. Yup. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I don't even know how you can enjoy that. Uh, it's crazy. 
So sports style has become a genre all its own, and in recent years, the eyeglasses have really exploded in the zeitgeist. I know that you need yours, but a lot of these guys now are busting out the glasses whether they have a prescription or not. So what I want to do is show you some of the looks that have bubbled up over the last couple years. I know that you're all about the positivity. I don't expect you to play fashion police, but I am curious, you know, the looks that you like, the ones that you'd maybe leave to your friends, and then maybe we can crown a king. Does that sound good? Perfect. All right. Laptop, please. First things first, Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook, he the king. Breaking down all type of barriers when it comes to when it comes to being an athlete and fashion. With Russell, it looked like a, a dress shirt with the sleeves cut off. Yeah, I wouldn't wear it, but Russell make it look incredible. <laughs> <laughs> right. Russell, yeah, Russell make it look incredible. Up next, Tom Brady. This guy. I mean, what can you say? Those glasses, I wouldn't wear them. I mean, it's, what negative can you say about Tom Brady? If you want to wear glasses, he can wear glasses. <clears throat> if we want to wear overalls and rain boots, he can do that, you know. Whatever he... <clears throat> Whatever he wants to do, he can do it. All right, next we have... Mary Poppins' ex-husband. <laughs> you know, Cam, uh, he's the king of hats. I haven't even seen Cam with the same look twice. One more <coughs> for you. Bron Bron. Now, this is the real king. And he was really one of the first ones to start wearing glasses, too. He's been wearing glasses since the get-go. Um, it's a lot of guys that just wear glasses just, you know, for the outfit or, you know, a costume. LeBron, he's been wearing glasses for a long time. Who's the top of Glasses Mountain? Westbrook is a king, and then the king after that, the quarterbacks after those guys. All right. All right, Vaughn. <sighs> this is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last one. Oh. You don't have to if you don't want to. A little dab. A little dab. What a culture. <laughs> that's, that's generous. That's generous, Vaughn. Yeah. You got the baby dab. <laughs> yeah. I got the Migos dab. Yeah. All right. All right, hold on. Get, yeah, yeah. Uh, Catch it. Find it. It's like doing the cinnamon challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I had a friend that beat the cinnamon challenge. This is the craziest thing ever. Yeah. Put it on a spoon. Ate the spoon. It was funny. He was, I mean, he was going through it, but he he ate it. Yeah. I've never I've never seen anybody. He looked like a cartoon. Like his his eyes was red, and he had smoke coming out of his ears. And when he swallowed, you could see just like the it was like an egg. They just went from here, and it like slowly went down. It was so hard to swallow, but he did. I don't know if I'm gonna do this though. <laughs> it's hard in the same channel. But yeah, I'm ready. All right. Cheers, my man. Going in, going in, Von Miller. Oh no, we kind of shaking around in there like it's saucy. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, Vaughn, it's the fourth quarter and time's running out, but before we get out, we need a prediction for the Super Bowl. You've called Tom Brady the best quarterback you've ever faced, Gronk the best tight end you've ever matched up against, and Bill Belichick the best coach. Are the Patriots destined for their sixth Super Bowl win, or do you see an upset on Sunday? Nah, Patriots ain't gonna win. Nick Foles and them gonna win. I'm lying. Of course the Patriots gonna win. It's the Patriots. Did you not see the game versus the Jacks? <laughs> he knows voodoo. I don't know what they got going on over there, but they didn't have Gronkowski. They haven't had Edelman all year. All right, well, you heard it here first. Von Miller with his Super Bowl prediction. Sunday on NBC, Eagles, Patriots. Now there's nothing left to do, but roll out the red carpet for you, Von. This camera, this camera, or this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. I'm just chilling. Thanks, guys. Oh, no, I mean, um. So for me and the Denver Broncos on the quest to get to Super Bowl 53. You know, this year's almost over. Hit this offseason as hard as we possibly can. Um, and we'll, yeah, we'll be back. God. How could you even make something like this? That's crazy. Hey, what's going on?
going on Hot Ones fans, it's Sean Evans checking in. If you enjoyed the video, do us a solid. Please subscribe. We're not above begging for clout over here, so you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button with a sledgehammer. Who appreciates you? Me.